And now a review of Rail Pass, a really unique take on pick up and deliver train games. Before we get going, we want to thank Mercury for sending us a copy of Rail Pass to check out. Rail Pass was designed by Tom Green and features artwork from Michael Christopher and Andrew White. It was published by Canadian the publishing group Mercury Games in 2019. Rail Pass is a cooperative train game for two to six players. That is, most people agree, best with a full table of six. Now, each round of Rail Pass lasts five to ten minutes, and that's it. In Rail Pass, players control one or more cities. Each city has a color associated with it and starts stocked up with two trains and a bunch of cargo cubes for the of the other colors. Once the timer starts, players will work together by loading their trains, supplying them with an engineer, and passing the trains to the other players, with the goal being to get as many cubes as possible to the correct cities. While doing this, they'll have to make sure their engineers don't get sent too far from home, deal with tunnels and a rail bridge, and watch to make sure they don't spill any cargo, or worse, cause a train wreck. The component quality in this game was way better than expected, mm. as you can see for yourself in our Rail Pass unboxing video on YouTube. Now, pretty much everything here was just a step above what I expect in a board game, especially a train game. The cargo cubes aren't wood. They're actually round plastic with rounded edges. Uh, the engineers are kind of weird looking. They kind of look like golf tees, but they're brilliantly designed so that they're, they're faceted so they won't roll. And the trains are actually chunky and quite heavy plastic. Now, the rules are clear and feature a full component list and plenty of examples. But they are a bit longer than I would have expected. But it ends up trying to describe how to pass loaded trains back and forth just takes more words than you would expect, which you'll get to hear for yourself in the next part of the review. Overall, you just get a lot of stuff in this box that's heavier than you'd expect, and it's of great quality. Well, that's enough about the great components. What are you doing with them in this pick up and deliver game? So when you sit down to play a rail pass, you first choose one of the various setups from the back of the instruction book, which provides two different layouts for every player count. Now, it is important to note that all six of these are used every game. Each layout will have you place these six on the board, or sorry, on the table, and then build connections between them. Now, these connections can be opened, blocked, have a tunnel, or use the train bridge. Next, players will grab a set of arrows for each city and place them on the top or sides of the cities they control, indicating the quickest route to each other color. This is going to help you a lot once the timer starts, as you can quickly see the best way to deliver each good. Next, for each city, you're going to take 20 of the cubes, four in each color other than the city's color, and kind of drop them onto the top of your city and then sort them into the shipping yard area at the top of the board. Each city then gets two trains, one silver short train and one gold long train. An engineer of the city's colors is placed in each of these trains, and a third engineer is placed on the hotel spot on their board. Each city has two sets of rails. Either rail can fit a smaller silver train, but only the top rail is actually long enough to hold a gold train. This will matter a lot once you start passing trains. Now, I have to say, just looking at pictures of this game in play seems really confusing. <laughs> There's a lot there on the table and that can be intimidating to an outside viewer. Mm -hmm. Just looking at a static image of the setup, you could easily think this is much more involved than a 10 minute game. And I will say it is more involved than your average filler game. Like there, there's some meat on this. Uh, th this is not a party game. We'll put it that way. Just because it's a short 10 minute game does not make it a party game, as you can tell from all the components. Now, once everything is set up, you're going to set a timer. This starts at 10 minutes for two players and is one minute shorter for each additional player down to as low as five minutes for a full six players. Note, there's no rail pass app or anything. Uh, the game expects you to own some form of timer in order to play. And note, uh, I did mention this earlier, I don't need it again, but if you have less than six players, some players will control more than one city. You'll always have all six players and all six colors in play. Now, some folks are, folks are probably going to complain about the lack mm. of an hourglass or a timer, but I think we're at a point now in time where it's hard not to have a timer mm -hmm. around you, whether that's a voice assistant, a phone, your microwave, or what have you. And in a game with the sort of concentration involved in this mm -hmm. one, an hourglass is useless. 
you need a sound to tell you that you're done. Yeah, you want some type of alarm or you need a player on the outside of the game ready to tell you to stop who are watching their watch or something. Now, once the timer starts, players then simultaneously, everyone's doing this at once, do a number of things to get the right cubes to the right city. Now, this involves things like loading trains by taking cubes from either end of your shipping yard. So it's a whole row of 20. You can only take from the two ends and you're going to take them from the board and put them in the trains sitting on your board. No, you can't load trains you picked up. They have to be what's called in the station. That's on the player board. Cards in your hand are on the rails. Can't load a train on the rails. See, it makes sense. Now, while trains in the station, you can also freely swap cubes between two trains in your station. Now, you can add or swap an engineer, either between trains or from the hotel on the board. Now, the colors of the engineers of your trains matter as engineers are only willing to travel to adjacent cities. They don't want to be too far from home. If you accidentally send an engineer too far, they will deliver the load for you, but then they quit and are removed from the game. When a train containing car cargo cubes is in a station at a city that matches the cargo's color, you must unload those cubes and deliver them. Finally, you can move or swap a train. To do this, you literally pick up the train and then deliver it to an adjacent city. If this is your own city, you can just place it on the new city spot, possibly having to pick up another train and kind of swap them. If another player controls the adjacent city, you must pass them the train. You cannot let go of it until they're holding it. And if there's a train tunnel between you, you actually have to pass the train through the tunnel, uh, going the right way even. And the same thing with the train bridge. You have to actually pass it through the train bridge. One of the things you got to watch for is you can never leave a train sitting on the table like, hey, Sean, this train's for you and put it on the table and do other things. If that happens, it's considered to have been part of a train wreck and all of the cargo, the train and the engineer are removed from the game. Now, you have to also be careful when passing trains because anything that falls during the game is removed from the game. And again, dropping a full train counts as a train wreck. Oh, I almost forgot the most important rule in the game. When you pick up a train, it's now considered on the rails, and you must say, toot, toot, before handing the train off to anyone else. Not only is this required, it's actually a really good way to get the attention of whoever you want to hand the train to. And I find it's usually toot, toot, followed by a name or a name, then toot, toot. Like, Grace, toot, toot, Grace, toot, toot, Grace. Not to mention drawing the attention from everyone at the friendly local gaming store you're playing at and getting more folks interested in the game. Very true. Now play continues until the timer runs out. Players then can put any trains in their hands into their stations and deliver any cubes that just arrived of the proper color. So you get to kind of clean up at the end. Then you're going to look at the cubes delivered at each city and find the two cities with the lowest number. You're going to multiply those two numbers together. Then you're going to lose a bunch of points based on anything you dropped. The things like the trains are minus five, engineers are minus two, and cargo cubes dropped are minus one each. Your total after this calculation is over, if it's over 100 or 100 or over, you're considered that you won. Anything less than that is a failure. Now, I have to say, that's not complex math, but it's still more math than I would have expected <laughs> for scoring in a game uh, that's, that's this kind of, again, it seems fun and and almost party like i mean we we've already said it's not but it it there's some really strange sort of difficulty versus not difficulty party yeah. versus not party uh things going on in this game it is a party game for train gamers i think is kind of what it is which is a step above a party game for you know playing with your friends with some drinks <laughs> especially with those spillage rules now, if that's not enough for you, the rules also include an expert variant. Now, when you get the game, it comes with a set of stickers that you're meant to put on the trains. Uh, the short trains get a single a sticker showing one color. The long trains have stickers showing two colors. You just randomize those the first time you stick them on. Now, what these represent is reserved spots on the trains. It's supposed to represent that that particular rail company is a contract with that color of good thematically. doesn't. But what it means when you're playing is those spots where the stickers are can only accept cubes of that color which means there's going to be times where you can't possibly fill these trains before passing them. So you're going to have to send a, an unfilled train to someone else. Now, what this does is greatly increases the difficulty of the game. And I got a feeling most groups are possibly never going to use this rule, except maybe to try it once for laughs. All right. Well, now that we know how to play, what was your overall impression of Rail Pass? 
Well, I'm going to step back a bit to go to when I first heard about Rail Pass. Um, I think I found a deal on it on Amazon and I was sharing it on one of my deal accounts. And I was like, what is this game? And I read the back of the box of the Amazon description. I was like, what the heck? This is a pick up and deliver train game where you actually pick up and deliver the trains. That is fascinating. That sounds awesome. I have to see what that is. That just sounds so neat. So I reached out to uh, Mercury Games. Actually, they reached out to me about the 18 shares and 18 coins review, which you can check out on YouTube and on the blog. And I asked, hey, if you're going to send me those, send me Rail Pass 2 because I really want to check it out. They agreed, which is awesome. Thank you, Mercury. So once I got the game and I started unboxing it, I discovered a few things about the game I had completely missed. Uh, again, I think it was an Amazon description, so bad on Amazon. First is how much stuff's in here. Like I pictured a much smaller, like almost Yardmaster styles box for people to know what I'm talking about. This is a, a, it's not a big box, but it's bigger than I thought. And it is packed and surprisingly heavy. And then everything in it's just really top-notch quality. Now, regarding all that stuff, in the unboxing, you note that the trains are really well packaged. Mm -hmm. Are you going to continue keeping them in bubble wrap or is that really overkill? I've already tossed the bubble wrap. I already tossed the box insert. Um, I do have a certain storage solution I used and everything fits in the box well. Nice and sorted. Um, I had Deanna look at them. These are solid trains. Like I, I think it's overkill on their part, but th I get it. They're trying to be careful. Um, now I know Mercury is also the company that produces container. And I have seen you over the years, people complain about chips being broken in container. So maybe they were just a little worried about it. I, I, they seem fine. Like the, the smallest little bits are like the, uh, the smokestack and everything like that. And honestly, if any of those broke off, it wouldn't affect gameplay at all. Plus like they're fairly solid. I have lots of miniatures and toys and games that have shipped with stuff that seems way more breakable than this. Now, the next surprise for me was that this was a cooperative game. I, I, in my head, I, obviously, I didn't go to Board Game Geek and do enough research, right? So in my head, I pictured people passing each other's trains, trying to compete with each other in some way. Now, thinking about it, I don't see how that would have worked, actually. Like, I, I think cooperation is the only way it would have worked. Because otherwise, you'd be like, toot, toot, and you'd be like, no, I'm not taking your train. Or, or you know what? Oh, sorry, I'm full up. I, I can't take your cubes, right? So I'm like, all right, I get it. Yeah, I, I, I guess it was inevitable. Um, and then the final part is the fact is real time. I really didn't expect I thought it was going to be like load a train, like everyone taking action, and then I'm passing a train. But again, it makes sense, especially with it being cooperative. Once I put all things together, I honestly can't think of a way to play this not real time or take turns or make it competitive. Now to our regular listeners and those folks who know Anshi games, you're probably wondering how <laughs> this game could get played enough times to be reviewed. In fact, this game contains most, if not all the aspects <laughs> that she simply doesn't enjoy. Real time cooperative dexterity games seems like a three strikes in your out mm -hmm. situation. So how did you get it played? Was it all with the kids? So to my and many others, people's complete and utter surprise, I did convince Deanna to try it. She's good to try everything at least once or twice, right? But not only that, she actually really enjoyed it uh, to the fact we were talking about it later about how neat the system was and how well it worked. And I think here we discovered the sushi effect in board games, right? That's where you take a bunch of things that shouldn't work well together, but somehow they do in a magical way to create something wonderful. And I think Rail Pass had the sushi effect on Deanna. All right, well, there you have it, folks. Sometimes you can get enough of a bad thing to make it good. I don't know. Some things just work. Now, as for the kids, uh, I only tried it with them recently and had some mixed results. For one, they they were shocked by the amount of components. Same same thing Sean had, where, where it just looked intimidating. So it took a bit to kind of calm them down and tell them it's okay. And then was describing it to them. They kept like, oh, that's so weird. That's so weird. That's so weird. But you know what? They both got it really well except for a couple little minor things like and they were quickly correct it's like no no not this this um but what happened was especially with my youngest she found it overwhelming overall now once she calmed down after a game but like this is a game you're under a lot of pressure and it's the type of thing that she has difficulty with it is uh dealing with lots of pressure and outside and multiple people talking to you at once. So right now I'm thinking it's not the best game for her. She did give it a shot. She played twice. She had a better time the first game, but it didn't the second. Now, whereas my oldest daughter had a much better time in most games. She did have one game, which I'm going to actually talk about later in the show. I won't get into details here. They, they kind of stressed her out a bit, but then we changed things up and she had a much better time the second game. So overall, I got to say, uh, with playing with kids, with Tiana, Rail Pass exceeded my expectations in almost every way. 
Like I had no clue I was going to get such great components in such a small box. And the whole system that Tom came up with is just brilliant. And it works so well. Like, I, I love the fact he included train elements like tunnels and bridges. And it just, the whole thing just works neat and, and it works well. And it avoids a lot of the cooperative board game foibles. For example, I can't see how you can really quarterback in this because there's no time. You have far too much to worry about on your own to try to tell some other one, someone else what to do. Unless maybe you get stuck and you're just waiting them to take a train and you pressure them a bit to like, hey, hey, I can't do anything until you take my train. But you're not telling them how to pass their other stuff, right? So there's, there's, I, I wouldn't call that quarterbacking. It's more um, edging on the other players. Now, that requirement of focus does lead me to some potential problems with the game. Because everyone's rushed and so focused on loading, unloading, passing, it's really easy to miss a mistake. Now, the most common of these mistakes is sending an engineer too far. Due to this, I actually think this could be a better game at three to seven players, with one player sitting out and running the game or umpiring. That way they can watch for things like wrong colored cubes delivered to a city or overworked engineers. Now, does this distant uh, distance aspect uh, for the engineers become more obvious with more players? I can see how it would be hard to notice that with two players, each running three cities in front of them to sort of keep track of which engineer is going too far. I found it with more players. We had more engineers fired, mm -hmm. but that's just uh, arbitrary based on six gameplays. Right. So uh, it's hard to tell if that's an ongoing thing. It's definitely something that's based on player experience. When you play your first round, you are so focused on get the cubes to the right place. You're going to forget. But then there's important rules where if you haven't put the train down, it hasn't reached the station yet, you could pass it back. And at that point, the engineer won't quit because you've sent them back. So I found that as you play more games, you notice that more. So not only are you watching what you ship, the person who gets it is going to do a quick look and go, can this engineer go here? And then, whoa, 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 take it back, two, 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 two. Hey, I don't want this. So it kind of went both ways. So I think it's more based on player experience than the number of players. Right. Now, another issue with being rushed is that you can get frustrated while playing this game. Um, and I've experienced both being frustrated with yourself for not reacting quickly enough or holding up the other players who are waiting to give you trains and trying to figure out how to maneuver the train so you can put this one down to put this down to move this one cube or the opposite where you're getting frustrated with other players because here you are all set with a fully loaded red train and the red players busy looking somewhere else and doing something and they got both their hands filled and you're like come on I, this train's full just take it like I, I'm good to go and you're just sitting there waiting for another player um, and this I found especially true for the players playing at the dead end so if you're at a dead end of a round route, every color you're shipping goes out one way. So you just want to load up your tra trains as quick as possible and pass them off. Yeah, you need a couple back with your colors on it, but like you're just sitting there going, come on, it's loaded. Come on, come on, come on, come on. And then you got that person in the middle who's got you going, come on, come on, come on. And the person on their side going, hey, I have stuff for you or hey, to give me that, right? So you kind of hate it going from both sides. And due to that, this isn't going to be a game for everyone. I, anyone who doesn't handle that kind of stress well um, isn't going to like this game. Now, this is one of the concerns Deanna had. And during one of our plays where she made a couple of mistakes that got her frustrated on early on and she was frustrated with herself, just made things worse. Like when she was frustrated, just led to more mistakes and she was getting more frustrated. She honestly said that if I was playing with other gamers, I probably would have been so embarrassed I might have quit playing after that. But we were playing with the kids, so it was okay. Similarly, like I said earlier, this game was ended up being a bit too much for my youngest to handle, at least for now. Like when she first played, she kind of got it, but we had her playing two adjacent cities. But then once we started paying attention, she was trading them, treating it as one city. So like she'd get a train from this side and deliver it to that city, but she actually can't do. There's supposed to be a divider in between them. So while well, she got the concept of the game. And she got to the point where she, like, she was done. After her second game, it was, I don't like this game, I'm done. I did talk to her after she calmed down. She's like, it's neat, I'd try it again, but definitely not for her. Okay. Now, the other part of Rail Pass that I found a bit annoying is just how long it takes to set up this game, especially the first round when you just broke it out of the box for a game night. Because there are a lot of components to start out at the start. And then there's the fact you have to make up six sets of cubes. Each of us has to be missing one of the colors so that you can drop them on your board. 
And then you're sorting through 120 cubes. And that is not quick. And I got to say that I, like the best word for this is inelegant. Like you're literally dropping cubes and then kind of trying to fit them into squares. It just feels like there could be a better system for that, though I don't know what it is. Like I don't have a solution for stocking the shipping yard, but I do have a strong suggestion to use when cleaning up the game. So it's quicker to set up and get playing next time. That is to sort each city's bits in its own container. Now, I use these plastic containers that air dry clay comes in. Uh, my kids get to play with the clay, and then I get a bunch of board game component storage containers. Now, Ziploc bags would work, or really any other small container would also suffice. I particularly prefer these because they're actually dirt cheap once you work it out. Now, what you're going to do is you are going to put in three engineers of one color, then four of each other colored cube, and also one complete set of arrows, which we actually tested today, and it ends up they fit two in these. So if you need a container, they'll fit all that. This way, the next time you play, you just hand that container to the person who has that color, and their dump onto their thing is just dumping the container. All right, well, of course, we all know no one likes cleaning up and sorting on the back end, mm -hmm. even though it's important to what makes setting up a game and getting it to the table faster the important part. Now, one amusing thing we did learn, uh, this was going into our, our sixth play of the game. We, we discovered this is the better you do in the game, the easier it is to not only put away, but to start another round. Because while the whole goal is to get cubes of the same colors to cities. So at the end, every city should have a nice pile of the same color cubes sitting there ready to sort. So I thought that was amusing that, that there's your encouragement to play better and do good is it's going to make the game easier. Now, saying that, it's also probably worth noting that this game can be hard, especially with new players. And it seems to get harder the more players you have. Now, I expect a cooperative game to be hard. You don't want an easy cooperative game. And even after a couple plays, you will notice you get better at managing everything in real class. I honestly think after four, three, four plays, you could probably even move up to the advanced rules. It just takes knowing what you need to process and what's prioritized. You, you won't get that your first game. It takes a couple of plays to get it. Now, the base mechanics you're going to get, this isn't like an eminent domain where there's this high learning curve to the game. It's just getting used to how you need to think to get this game to work. Now, the final surprise for me with Rail Pass was how well this game plays with only two players. With two players, you each control three cities, and I expected that to be overwhelming, but it wasn't because it does seem odd at first, but you're passing trains to yourself, and there's no one else to wait on, and you can do a lot of quick swaps really quickly to get cubes into the right place. I actually think it's kind of neat too that they didn't put any tunnels or bridges between a single player cities because while you are passing yourself having to pass yourself through a tunnel would just seem weird and now while it's not mentioned in the rules i actually think you could play this game solo seeing how many cubes you can deliver on your own and seeing what score you can get but again you don't want to pass it through bridges and tunnels to yourself though you'd have to handle all six cities and the odds of managing the conductors without those mistakes seems lower I still think it could be done. I think it'd be an interesting challenge. I, th I think it can be done. I don't know if a score of 100 is possible. We'll see. Now, unfortunately, due to the pandemic, I didn't get to try rail pass with the full six players. I'm limited to people in my immediately family, my immediately, my immediately family, my immediate family, which is four. Now, I will say the game definitely gets much more chaotic and much more loud with more players. And I got to say, in a way, that was a cool thing. It was a neat thing. And I think that's going to be a real blast with six, especially in a public play at, uh, type of atmosphere, right? I am looking forward to trying this out with six players. And when I do, I'll be sure to share my thoughts on that on our Tabletop Bellhop Gaming Podcast when it happens. This does seem like a great game for game night FLGS style game or event game. As mm -hmm. the hurried pace and the excitement of calling out toot toot along yes. with that dexterity aspect and table presence really is a big aspect to any successful public play game. Yeah, this should be on any list of games with good table presence, especially if you use the train bridge. The train bridge just kind of solidifies it. Without You can play without the train bridge. It's not quite the same. You throw that train bridge out there and people are immediately like, oh, wait, train, what's going on? You have trains? 
what I find strange about this game is I have heard very little about this Canadian board game since its release. Like no one's talking about this. I don't think I've heard it mentioned on a single podcast. Now I realize it, it's it's newer. It's it's not necessarily new hotness, but like 2019, it's not an old game at this point. I, at this point, right, I would say Rail Pass qualifies as a true hidden gem train game. The next time someone's asked me what's a hidden train game, I'm going to be like Sync Terror and Rail Pass. Those are two games no one's ever heard of. I think there's a lot to like about Rail Pass, and it's going to appeal to a broad range of gamers. It's a totally new take on train games and pick up and deliver games, which is a refreshing surprise. If you're a cooperative game fan and want something different than point-based movement and collecting sets of cards to remove cubes, I strongly suggest taking out Rail Pass. If you thrive on real-time games and like games like Fuse or Escape, you are going to love Rail Pass. Now, if you're a train game fan and want to see the train game themes pick up, deliver, and move in engines used in a unique way, I'd take a moment and check out Rail Pass if you can. Now, where this is not going to work is for players who get stressed out by pressure, especially the type where more than one person is demanding your attention at the same time. Because once you get past two players in Rail Pass, there's always at least one player at the table dealing with two or more sides, players coming at them from two or more sides. Now that said, based on my wife's reaction, even if you hate real-time games, dexterity games, cooperative games, or games that cause you stress, you may just find that Rail Pass combines those in a way that's more fun and engaging than you might expect. Though, try before you buy. Don't rush out and buy this one if you don't think you'll enjoy it. I personally can't wait to play this game some more. I'm really looking forward to when we can gather together uh, in public and I can get this to a table with a full group of six or maybe even seven so we can have someone watch and make sure we're not cheating with those engineers. Well, that's it for our look at Rail Pass from Mercury Games. Be sure to check out the written review over at the blog at tabletopbellhop.com for an even more in-depth look at this really unique train game.